Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is David Hyman, your tour guide in Israel. Today's tour is in the Galilee region, Western Galilee, to the Crusader Fortress of Monfort. So to get to the Fortress of Monfort, uh, you can either arrive from the south from Road 89 or from the north from Road 899. Either way, you need to hike there because it's off the road. We were going to tour this uh, Crusader Fortress, which is hidden in the forest in the mountains of Galilee. And it is absolutely off the beaten track. And so in Israel, everyone uses these maps to hike. And you can see how the map has a very detailed topography but also the trails are marked in different colors. So you need to find your destination and then find your color and then follow the color. So my trail is the red. So all I need to do is stay on the red trail. It'll take me down to the Montfort Fortress. So the uh, Crusader period in Israel uh, was during the Middle Ages. It lasted for nearly 200 years, from 1099 until 1291. Uh, the First Crusade was launched by the call of uh, the Pope, Pope Urban II. See, the Holy Land uh, was under Islamic rule uh, since the 7th century. So the Crusades, they were actually religious wars. Uh, the goal of these Crusades was to um, restore Christian rule over the most important sites of the Christian world, uh, the churches in Jerusalem and in Bethlehem. And there's the castle now. So we're going Montfort Castle. So during the Crusader period, about 80 castles and fortresses were built all over the region, uh, usually along what were the current borders of the Crusader Kingdom or along the roads. Uh, the fortresses and the castles were usually built for military need. Uh, the one we're visiting today, the Montfort, is an exception. So this is the uh, ditch that the Crusader Knights carved in the rock to separate their fortress from the mountain above them. You can see that it was probably, they used a natural crack in the rocks and they used uh, their hammers and their chisels and whatever technology they had to create this ditch. What we have here is a snake skin. So you can see how beautiful it is. It's very, very delicate. I hope not to break it. Uh, you know, every snake, they replace their skin once a year. They just grow too big for their skin. Uh, and then they just have to replace it with a new skin. So what they do is they peel it off. Uh, the way they do it is they just like, it grabs on some kind of uh, rock or something and they peel out of it as if you peel off your sock. So whenever you find a snake skin, it is always inside out. So uh, this is where the head was. And there's the tail. So it's not a very large snake. So beautiful here. It's such a dense forest, which is not typical for Israel. Only up here in the Galilee we get this. All the oak trees, this is all natural forests. Down there you can see the Kziv River as it makes its way west towards the Mediterranean Sea, which is all the way there. You can see the whole the city of Nahariya, those big white buildings. Uh, the fortress itself, we're gonna climb it in a minute. And on this side, you can see cliffs of the northern rim of the Kziv River. So you can see on the map and also here in the field uh, that uh, the location of the Montfort Castle doesn't really have any military advantage. Uh, it's not on a main road, as you can see. 
And also it's not on any border or frontier of the Crusader Kingdom. Uh, on the west side, there's larger fortresses, Akko and Akhziv. On the north, there's the three really large ones, uh, Bofor and Tibnin. And even on the west side, there's a much larger fortress in Tzfat. So who built a crusader castle here and why in this location? Yeah, so it is kind of a surprise that the uh, crusaders chose this location. Uh, I'm just reminding you that they needed protection, so they're on the hill. But they needed the water source for their agriculture. They were farmers. Uh, and they also needed the water to provide energy for their uh, sugar mills and their wheat mills. So the second half of the Crusader period uh, that starts at 1187 after the loss of the Battle of the Horns of Hittin, uh, the leading powers of the Crusader Kingdom are three military orders of knights. Uh, you've probably heard of the two larger and famous ones, the Hospitallers and the Templars. But then a third order of knights was formed. Uh, these are the German-speaking Teutonic Knights. Uh, so they fell out with the other two large orders and decided to relocate their headquarters. So they purchased uh, this uh, hill. It was a uh, agricultural farm owned by a French family. And they moved uh, their headquarters here. Uh, they also moved their archives and their treasury. And they're the ones who built it, fortified it, and lived here for about 50 years on the mountain of uh, Montfort in this castle that we can see now. So the highest structure in the Montfort fortress is where we are now. This was the tower, the watchtower. Uh, not much left of it, just like the uh, foundation and the base and a few of the walls of the tower. And it was needed so they could protect the fortress from the most vulner vulnerable side, the south side. So the castle is built uh, in three sections, more or less. Uh, where we are now is the highest part, it's the tower. And then the middle section right below us would be what they call the administrative section. Probably was a two-level uh, building. The lower part was administrative needs and the second floor was maybe the church. And then the third part, which is a little further down, was uh, the Grand Hall. Uh, down there you can see the River Kaziv. So beautiful how the trees kind of grow in the fortress. This was probably the church. It has these uh, three columns in the middle that would give it like a large space. And, uh, and all the rainwater that came down in the rainy season would be collected in pipes such as this into the reservoir. So the first excavations of the Montfort Castle uh, took place in 1926 by the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yes, I know that's a surprise for you. Uh, so the cur curator of the uh, Arms and Armor Department, his name was Bashford Dean, he was searching for um, a 13th century suit of armor. And because uh, this fortress was uh, untouched since it was destroyed in the 13th century, they thought that they could reveal one of those uh, suit of, uh, suits of armor. And uh, he launched uh, an excavation. So they didn't find a suit of armor, uh, but they did a great job. A uh, hundred years later, Haifa University have been excavating uh, since 2012. Uh, there have been six seasons under Professor Adrian Boas. Uh, a lot of the work has been done here 
on what they call the um, Grand Hall. So it sits on these enormous vaults, and the second floor was maybe a refectory, like a dining room, and then there was a third floor, which probably was residential, where the knights would live. So the Teutonic Knights didn't really get to enjoy their beautiful castle. Uh, Forty years after they built it, uh, they were attacked by the Muslim army of the Mamluks under their Sultan, General Baybars. Uh, all the Crusader fortresses, towns, castles in the Holy Land lost were defeated by Baybars. And uh, the Crusader period ends in 1291, including the fortress of Montfort. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed uh, this tour of the beautiful fortress of Montfort in the Galilee region in Israel. So if you did, please give me a big thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you on our next tour of wonderful Israel. Until then, shalom, shalom, take care, bye-bye,